from a very proud mother who did not cut her daughter, so this film meant a lot to me. Yeah. I will get through this, I promise. <laughs> okay, so um, I wish we could have some chairs, but we're going to start anyway. Um, I just wanted to, first of all, congratulate you, Giselle, uh, for putting that camera out there, because those of you who make films who are in this room, I've always said campaigning and social justice issues and media really it's like the best marriage i've always said it's like we need people to go and tell our stories when we're out there so i would like to congratulate you for doing that but ruby oh my god what <laughs> did you do i think you need to come up here As a mother, as a therapist, as a campaigner, as a social activist, as just a human being, I want to thank you for the work that you do because in my clinic I get to see the women after they wake up, but you, you get there before that even happens. I, I, was saying, I was saying to my daughter, you know, if Hold on, I, who's in the room, I said, if we had someone like Ruby <laughs> on our side, we might never have been cut. So I really thank you for, for what you did what, and what you do and what you continue to do because let me tell I was sitting here and I said, you know, for the next few minutes that we have here, I just want everybody to raise money for that safe house because let me tell you, safe spaces are so key to this work and that's where, because there's no point of telling parents, don't do this if we don't have safe spaces for our daughters. Yeah. Just a few key points I would like to point out if I can get through this. <laughs> I think for me what this film has highlighted, one, it's grooming of children and grooming of communities because Watching the mothers think this is okay, parents think this is okay, and children think this is okay, it's a grooming process. We need to use the right language. Group cutting exists. I think it was so good that you actually really picked, picked up on that because as campaigners, we're constantly saying group cutting happens, it's real. We hear stories of 150 girls be cut at the same time. And I loved, I really, what I really loved about this film, you did not pay any time or attention to religious leaders or community leaders because it's not about them. This was about the girls in this film. And this is about children's rights. Because when we talk to religious leaders and so-called community leaders, who are usually majority of them misogynist men, we are not here to negotiate. You really do that so well in your work, and you're really presenting that in the film. I think that was absolutely a uh, key point. And you are the hero of this uh, film. Yeah. Yes. yes. But the yes. bravest, <laughs> bravest, bravest, bravest people in this room with those little girls, because I couldn't have done that at that age. I think that was the most upsetting bit for yeah. me. Yeah. So, let's get into some questions. <laughs> right. Um, uh, Ruby, actually, first question for you. I think you're this hero, you're doing all this great work, but I think it's important that people know the struggles that you actually face when you do this work. I think it's important. I know you, the outcome is always great, but what are the struggles that you actually face on a daily basis? Daily, daily basis, but not just at work, but in your personal life. Thank you very much <coughs> for a good question. Really, it's a challenge. We are working against the, our traditions. Our own traditions is a challenge to our community. But as even from our families. When I started, most of parents, they started, especially men, confronting my husband, telling him, why are you allowing your wife to do such work? Why, you, why are you allowing her to oppose our tradition? Really, we are not happy. And especially when women were coming to my office asking advice to help them on how they could demand for their rights. Now, I created a lot of enemies in the community. So, <laughs> a lot of words to my husband, to my father, my mother-in-law. So, really, it's a challenge. And sometimes they, they confront my husband. <coughs> when are you going to cut your daughter? And they know that. I am standing against FGM. They just find some issues. The conflict, they create conflict within my family. Even my husband is finally asking, you have to stop doing that. Leave it, they were going to kill you. But I told him, let me die. 
what I don't want the girls to be cut, like it happened to me. So that is where I deserved even my life to save the girls, as you see in the film. So, but some others, they said, where is she living anyway? <laughs> we can kill her <laughs> because she's preventing us not getting even some cows to solve our family problems in our families. The girls are running to the safers. But almost I'm saying with the girls to the safers. If they will kill me, they will also kill their daughters. Again, when I pass through some ways, that is the woman who don't want the girls to be cut. So the fingers upon me. But I am standing strong to make sure that FGM is not <coughs> continue through educating our people, through educating the parents and the girls too. Even it's affected even my family life, I can say. My marriage has broken. Even some of pastors, again, the religious leaders, they also entered in there and listened to traditional leaders. This is a challenge. Those are the personal issues which are coming in front of me. But I am fighting against FGM as the FGM survivor. Thank you. At the beginning, it took you three years to make this film, and I can't imagine this was not an easy task for you. But I guess the question, I think many, maybe in this audience, and our beloved trolls who might be watching this will be asking this question, you know, you're a white woman, why would you make a film about African girls? That's always a question that I know that would always come up. So maybe, maybe you can clarify that for the audience and the other people who might be asked, thinking about this. Well, I think, it's, <coughs> I think it's very simple. Human rights are human rights. People's rights are being abused. Some of the people whose rights are being abused are white, some are black, some are Asian, of all colors, descriptions, and gender. The abusers are also black, white, male, female, of just different genders. I think it's really important that we all care about human rights, the human rights of others. And I personally know, don't believe, but I know that FGM is the worst systematic human rights abuse committed against girls and women in the world today. 200 million survivors, 44 million of them are girls under the age of 14. 14. <coughs> and every year, 3.9 million girls are at risk of being cut. Some of them are right here in the United Kingdom. Some were born in the United Kingdom. Some were born in France. I'm from Canada. I know that girls in Canada are at risk. The Canadian government knows Canadian girls are at risk. And in Canada, this is not on the agenda. Part of my agenda is to put it on the agenda in Canada. And this film, I wanted to go all over the world. I didn't just make this film to make yet another documentary, because I've made many about all kinds of human rights abuses in various different countries, perpetrated against lots of different people of different colors and religions. I made this film though because with this film, I want to be part of the solution. I want to help girls. I want their voices heard loud and clear. And I can tell you for a fact that these girls in my movie, in our movie, Roby, they wanted their voices heard. I spent two months there. I explained to them why I was there. They wanted their voices heard and honestly, they could care less if I was black, white, old, young, male, female. They are just grateful that their voices are being heard. And, and one thing I wanted to pick up in the film, and I wonder if both of you can actually answer this question, what I found really fascinating, and I, and I see the same thing when I travel back to Kenya or Senegal, that the authorities are very clear about this. Like they're very, I mean, I, I, I really was at the edge of my seat when I was watching the scenes when the police were walking in. In the West, a problem that we have, we are tiptoeing around this still. We're like, we don't want to upset mm -hmm. people, we're scared to say this. And with lack of resources, the police over there are not funded as the police. I mean, we already have issues here, but mm -hmm. we can't compare it to the police in Tanzania. <laughs> but what was that like to see authorities and campaigners and everybody working together as a team? And what was really interesting, the fundamental um, theme or what everybody came back to, 
we don't care, we're going to protect the child. For me, that was really important to, to see that. Yeah. And actually, I was sitting there thinking, the, 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 the police in the West, they need to watch this film so they can find me. Because we need to, do you know what, if we need to save a child, I'm happy to go and barge into people's room. And I've done it, and I've, I've removed kids from homes. And I didn't care, and I got called every single thing. But, um, but for me, it's how, how, what would you say to the audience in the West, I guess, would be for you? who are still tiptoeing around this, because we are, I'm telling you, I, I promise you, we are not, we're still very worried about this, we, we're worried about upsetting people. What would you say? Mm -hmm. um, maybe, can uh, okay, I start with the government? Yeah. It's still more, they have to enforce their laws <coughs> against the FGM. Mm. But also the partners, they should make sure they work in collaboration with these uh, 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 government sectors, uh, the community development offices, the social welfare, and the policy gender desk. So if they work together, they plan together and they work together, they will collaborate together in order to fight against this FGM. Mm -hmm. So I would like to uh, ask them to work hard, don't give up, and we need to have more activists from the community. I think you needed to do that in the area, those uh, like, so that they could stand up and talk against their tradition, which is affecting girls. Nobody who will come to tell, to talk about you, you have to start, to start yourself. Even I can give you an example. When we used to go to the community, some of traditional leaders asking, <laughs> they were trying to ask, ah, which tribe are you coming from? And why are you telling us about this to stop FGM? <laughs> they say, ah, I'm coming from Rovuma. Why do you know that this is a effect? So when they, and you are saying, I'm Robi, I'm coming from Korean tribe. And they keep quiet, some they look at downside. It's, you are doing this to us. So as a woman from a Korean tribe, I know the pain. That is why I'm standing here in order to fight against it. You have to stop it. Because the girls are not continuing the education because of FGM. We have a lot of LHRD marriages because of FGM. Sometimes I ask them, in your village here, can you tell me how many girls reached from five, <coughs> secondary education level? Nothing. They're all married. Any girl at the university? Nothing. that like for you, seeing <coughs> how people are collaborating in that way? And we don't see that here in the way. Well, it, it was actually amazing, but uh, <coughs> to see the police collaborating, and you know, it, this was a completely, as you know, unmediated film, so no narration, just subtitles, so some things are not quite explained. But what does happen in, in, uh, in northern Tanzania with Robi is the social services go, the police go, Robi goes, the village chief goes, there are loads of people that go on these reconciliations. So it was absolutely incredible to see people working together. Now, you know, it's not flawless. You know, there is some corruption. There's some things that don't always work out. But Roby Samwali is truly, you know, a driving force in that community, and she's got people behind her. We had a screening in, in Tanzania um, at uh, ZIF, the Zanzibar International Film Festival. And just a few days before, Roby wrote me an email and said, the police superintendent, the assistant district commissioner, um, social services, they all wanted to come to Zanzibar. And they all flew to Zanzibar. And half the room was full of government officials from Mugumo, northern Tanzania, where this was happening. They all came to support the film. More importantly, they came to support Roby and her work because she's such a force. But just to go back to your other question about there's not enough being done in our countries. I think we are pussyfooting. We are being silent. We are scared to speak out. In Canada, a senior media manager that I tried to persuade to do a story about FGM, not my film, just a general story about FGM in Canada. For months he said, yes, yes, I'm trying. We're working on it. Get back to me. And eventually when I just one last time said, come on, is this happening or not? He told me, I'm really sorry, but my producers don't want to go there. They think it's too politically, culturally sensitive, explosive. I have it in writing. 
last me week, my sister-in-law said, <coughs> I'm going to have a screening of your film at my very shishi country club to raise money for the safe house. Two days <coughs> later, she came back and said, nope, the director of the country club has vetoed it. It's too politically sensitive. You know, what is sensitive about taking a child and cutting off her private parts? It's like if people were cutting off their children's right arm as part of their cultural practice, would we stand by and say that's okay, it's part of the culture? It's not. We have to speak up, each and every one of us. And so before we wrap this up, not that we're wrapping it up any time because we need to get some questions from them. I know, I know, I know. But I have brought with me today um, some pieces of paper. It says FGM is my issue too. So my film is not just a film, it's a campaign. So before we all leave here, anyone who feels comfortable, we want you to hold up one of these signs proudly, and we're going to take a photo. It's not going to be a good one because it's so dark in here, but it will be on the record that we've all said we're standing up and, and, and defending children whose human rights are being violated. Because what I always say, Leila, is if it was your daughter, if it was your daughter, Diane, who was in danger of being cut, how far would you go to protect her? How far would you go, Fiona? How, would you, how far would you go, Caroline? How far would we all go? And why can't we stand up for other people's daughters? Which is why my film is called In the Name of Your Daughter. Perfect. And just to cut to uh, the audience, but I just wanted to make one, one clarify something. I think people are so focused on the cutting. Grabbing a child, pinning them to a table, spreading their legs apart, touching their genitals, you committed two crimes. So start from there first. So it's not, I think people are so focused on cuttings. The cutting comes afterwards, but actually, the fact that those children are pinned in such a way, they're already being violated. Okay, on that note, anyone has a question? Um, Do you want to stand up? Okay. Yeah, so can, yeah. So can I just start by saying I thought it was the most amazing film, and what was amazing about it was that it was a, a film full of hope. And actually, I don't know why that country club won't share that film, because <coughs> in fact, it's a hopeful film, and it's about little girls fighting back. So perhaps you should bill it as a film about children fighting back. Um, the problem with FGM, of course, it is a human rights abuse. It's not a cultural tradition. It's a human rights abuse. And if men's penises were being cut off, it would be designated a human rights abuse a long time ago. But it was a very beautiful film. Thank you very much. I want, the question I wanted to ask was, when you return the girls to their homes, do you have any sense of whether a percentage <coughs> of whether they end up actually being cut? I watch them going back with great trepidation, thinking, I know obviously I could see from some of those sequences you do keep in touch with those young girls, but does it ever happen that they go home and they still get cut? Thank you very much for the good question. <coughs> um, after hand over the girls back to their parents, what we do, we sign, we give the parents the consent form to sign, commit to themselves that they will protect their daughters and they will not allow them to be cut. So, and our plan was to do, to make a follow up after every three months. When we do the follow up, we talk to the girl, the teachers, following the girl, how is she doing, talk to the parents, but also together with the parent and the girl to go to the health center for checkup if she has not been cut. But really it's a challenge. Although most of the parents are afraid to cut their daughters because they say they have already committed. According to some challenges, <coughs> it could happen. Although we, I have not yet noticed that, that there is a girl who have been cut. Well, you don't want to mess with Ruby, so anything else? Anyone else has another question? I just want to add to that. You know, Ruby says she Good. doesn't know of any girls that have been cut. Um, I think it's very possible, obviously. I think the really important thing is all the work that Roby does, and it's not an accident that the girls in the film are so empowered and so strong. <laughs> so even if a few, one or two or some girls are cut, they are going to stand up for their daughters in the future. 
because Roby has done her job so well. Let me take an example. Yes, we also have volunteers whom we are working together. So they also help to protect those girls when they go back to the... If they have some challenges, they could meet, see them, and they talk to them. So we can receive a message from the community anytime about the dangers for any girl who have returned back. A girl like you, Flora, mm. although you see the way <coughs> her father is, mm. you see, but we are doing a follow-up. Although even <laughs> when we visited her, the father even, he don't, he don't want to see. He, he asked me, what do you want to my family? Really, I don't want to see you. <laughs> but I'm making a follow-up. Flora is happy and she has passed to continue with her secondary education. Oh. So she's doing fine. Oh, my God. I, I, I couldn't agree more with what Fiona was saying about the film. It's, it's amazing. Fabulous. Um, I, um, the, one of the things that really shocked me was actually, funnily enough, not with the girls, but with the men and the kinds of things that they were saying. I mean, completely unreconstructed. And, and uh, I, I found that really <coughs> astonishing just to sit there and listen to, to, and to hear what the, some of their views were. Um, and that was very, very enlightening, um, I thought. The one thing um, I wanted to ask you about is, are you concerned that the cutting season was the main thrust of this, but there were indications that it's going underground and that they are going to be cutting at any time and at night so that it can't be found? I mean, are you concerned about that and how big a threat is it and what can you do? Thank you very much. We are. Uh, what we are doing first is education. <coughs> we continue to educate our community, really to know the, uh, the effects of FGM. We have men's clubs in the community who are uh, promising us to marry women who have not been cut. And they are training to educate other men also about the effects of FGM, not to cut their daughters. Um, we have school programs. We have community intervention in general, as you saw. <coughs> you see the feeling. Um, so we have also volunteers in the villages whom we have trained them uh, we have uh, good wishes people, activists whom they have changed and they are um, supporting us the fight against FGM that is all but the traditional leaders as you said, they are trying to change even their time they are making now during night they cut the girls so what you do through school programs all the girls who are at risk are identified there with their teachers. So we do a strong follow-up upon them, even talking to their parents, that your girl has not been cut, and you may cut her, but you have to sign the consent form to make sure that she will not, you will not cut her. So we are trying to do that in order to reduce the number of the girls who Although there are some who are cut in the night, but some are also escaping and come to the safe house. Some, through volunteers, they could be hidden somewhere while uh, the safe house could rescue them from their community in collaboration with the police or with other actors. So we are trying to do that. That is the challenge. For the young, like I can say, in Serengeti district, for the infant children, they have initiated the program at clinics, to clinics that if the child is taken <coughs> to clinic, especially for the girl, there should be a healthy checkup if she has been cut or not. And they are also provide anti-FGM training to the pregnant women during the clinic <coughs> That is what we are trying to do. Thank you. Yes, a young baby girl died a couple of weeks ago who was cut, so it's a constant challenge. Um, but the Can Canadian government has given a small amount of money for Robbie to start uh, an outreach program with the film, which is going quite well. Um, I was in Tanzania in July, and at the first we had a, at the first village screening on a Sunday evening, and the following morning three young girls showed up age 9 and 10, who are running away from their families to come to the safe house. 
So, you know, it's good news, but it's obviously not perfect. And one of the challenge, challenges Roby faces is a lot of international governmental organizations don't believe in safe houses because they think it's, it's separating children from their families and how can we support that. And on the other hand, you saw lots of girls remain at the safe house at the end of the cutting season because they can't go home and there's ongoing costs, operating costs that lots of organizations don't want to support. Um, I, I just want to tell a little story. Uh, Roby, you were there in Tanzania, in Dar es Salaam. We had two of the girls at the screening and somebody asked them, <coughs> asked Rosie, who's in the film, you know, some people don't think that safe houses are a good idea because it separates children from their families. And her answer was very clear. Rosie said, look, if Mama Roby hadn't protected me in her safe house, I would probably now <coughs> be married and pregnant with my second child. And I'm just 12 years old. It's absolutely wonderful what you're doing, and it's really inspired us as well. And um, I started working in Tanzania in 2005 when we met a Maasai community in Ngorongoro. And I didn't think there would be anything we could do about the, um, the guy we were working with because there was no clean water at the time. Um, so just mentioned that the boys are circumcised, got a grand ceremony, and then just casually said in the girls as well. Ooh, I'm a midwife as well, and I just thought, whoa, <laughs> where do we begin with this? And he said, no, it's fine, it's normal. But then I heard of people like you and what you were doing um, and started to Google around. And I don't know if you've come across Safe Mar, part of Safe Kenya, Safe being sponsored arts for education. Uh, so Maasai people came. We ran some workshops in the area with young men, uh, respected elders, respected women cutters, and young girls, and they all got together. And it was um, amazing how they all, um, the guy from Safe Mar said, um, we Maasai have always changed. We've this was a local ma a local mass. I said we've, we've changed a lot. We used to um, wear leather. We now wear cloth. We used to not believe in education. Now we do. Um, and then the uh, the man from Safe Mar said, "So, so what's what do you think is good about about um, circumcision, female? They call it circumcision, but obviously we know. But uh, they said uh, respecting our parents. They had maybe two. <coughs> on the list. What do you think is bad?" excruciating pain, blood loss, death, infection, difficulty passing urine, difficulty, bowel zone, difficulty in child and he said, oh, you seem to have a lot more in the what's bad about it section, so what would you like to do about it? And they all said they wanted to stop, but they didn't know how, because it was so big. Um, that they, so then they started to discuss it, and they said, well, we'll speak to the elders, we'll speak to the women, we'll speak. So that's carried on, and now we run classes in the schools and in the um, and, and the elders are pledging some are, and just your experience is the, what some men say is really shocking, um, but at the same time there are enlightened people, and you just have to keep going with education, don't you? And now quite a few of the girls have progressed to secondary without having been cut and, and haven't been married, because it's not just the one issue, is it? it's the whole the marriage, so it's the whole life. Is there, is there a question you want to ask? So, just, oh, so thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because it's all part of the same thing. <laughs> Okay, I did have a question. Um, I'm Hada Ali, um, and one thing that I wanted to say is that yes, the question I wanted to ask is out of my head. But as a survivor, as an educator in the UK, as a nurse of sexual health and HIV, I have seen a lot. And as a survivor, I have gone through a lot with myself. And I think the main thing that came out tonight of being here and watching you guys and watching that amazing, amazing movie that I think <laughs> I've never seen anything as powerful as that is how do we, how can we take this further? How can we use this in everyday thing in the UK? Because one thing I have a problem with the UK is that I live here, as Leila would say, and we are educators, I'm a nurse, Leila is a psychotherapist, and we talk about this all the time, but we find it really, really hard to actually make our point across as a professionals and as a survivors as well. But how do we take this movie 
and make sure that it goes across the UK. And after that, I admire you, my sister. Is something as a little girl that grew up in Somalia, who had FGM myself, always dreamed about doing. And I will follow your first step. I might copy you at some point as well. <laughs> Thank you. Now, now you all of you are my witness. But I really think that you, in the Western world or in England, they, they call it like you have balls <laughs> to do that. You know, because I've really been so scared. But anyway, well done. And I will follow you your first step. And yeah, I just want to hear that how we can take this in the UK further than here today. You want to quickly answer her question? Okay. Let me just answer that very quickly. Um, <laughs> Sweden has acquired the film to put in every single school in Sweden because they have a lot of members from practicing communities and they have Swedish girls at risk. I would be delighted if the UK took this film and put it in every school in the UK and certainly in affected communities uh, because my film is, giving, is about giving a voice to those girls and it's about empowering and amplifying the voices of those girls, and amplifying the voice of Robi Samweli, of Alayla Hussein, of Hodo, and all the other people that are working against it. Uh, so there's lots of ways we can use it. You are going to be <coughs> seeing the film on the BBC. It'll be a shorter version, but the BBC have bought it. In fact, they were the first uh, organization that came in on it early on, along with a bunch of Indiegogo um, uh, crowdfunding, which I thank all of you for who participated in that. So you will see it in the UK. It will probably have a different title, but it will be the same film, only only a bit shorter. Um, but we just something you want to add to? How, how do we donate? How do we make donations? I have some postcards with the website, the name of the website, and there's a donate button there. Just come here, and I will hand them out to you. Um, so what I'd like to do now before we end is everyone stand up, hold up your sign, and my husband's going to take a photo. <laughs> <laughs> the fruit of